Many recent F1 fans find it hard to believe that Williams were once one of the strongest teams in F1, as evidenced by their impressive statistics, which includes nine constructors' championships. However, their recent run has been dismal as they have finished last in the championship every year since 2018. Last year the team changed owners, and that has brought in some much needed cash to the team that had been finding it hard to survive. Their driver, George Russell, has now spoken to Motorsport about how the team's priorities were affected by their economic state prior to the ownership change. I'm your host, Dylan Shelley, and first up on Formula World, Russell reveals Williams' priorities prior to ownership change. Russell began by looking at his time at Williams ever since he made his debut in 2019. Obviously, 2019 was an incredibly difficult season. And then with the events of what unfolded throughout 2020, with the pandemic and the financial situation of the team becoming incredibly difficult, we recognised that it would be so tough to develop, improve. He then explained why, even with new owners and a cash influx, they can't just expect results immediately. We do now have new owners. Unfortunately for us, it probably came slightly too late to actually make a proper difference for 2021. You can't just suddenly inject a load of cash and expect results because your baseline is so far away. He also explained how the new owners are taking a long-term approach. It would not have been wise for them to have done that because they're not looking to rush. They're looking to do things right, which is absolutely the right way. They're here for the long haul. They've got a very strong mid to long-term target. The team also underwent a recent restructuring and Russell explained how that is also a positive for the team. And now with the arrival of Yost and technical director FX, the team is now finally starting to have some real stability, which will allow all of the other workers to fully focus on their own roles under the direction of the guys at the top, which we didn't really have for so long. He then revealed how under the previous owner, performance had to take a back seat as it was all about survival. As I've said before, when Claire and Mike were here, their main objective was to keep the team alive, which is absolutely the right objective, but performance was a secondary target. He signed off by reiterating why the team now has a bright future. Whereas now, performance is everything. Potentially a lot of us would not have been here today had it not been for the great efforts of Claire and Mike to keep the team alive during the pandemic. But now, things are stable and the future looks bright for the team. Fast feed. Mercedes are disappointed to announce that former F1 driver Romain Grosjean's Mercedes test has been postponed because of travel restrictions. They are, however, committed to giving Roman his chance in a Mercedes F1 car and they're working to reschedule the test later this summer. Mercedes team principal Toto Wolff has indicated that they come off the back of two street circuits unsuited to their car, two circuits they knew would be difficult for them. They were disappointed to lose a podium finish and a victory through their own mistakes. That frustration reflects the high standards they hold themselves to and it is what drives them forward. Williams team boss Jost Capito has stated that at the moment he wouldn't rule anything out, it's all open regarding the driver situation in F1. He assumes that George Russell will be with them until the end of the season and he would like that too, everything else is speculation. He added that they have a contract with him which is valid, but you know that anything can be arranged if it is necessary. He has a good relationship with Toto, he can call any time. Red Bull's Max Verstappen would have liked to win, and it's fair to say they were on course to win in Baku, but that's racing and these things happen. Sometimes you can't do anything about it, so they just have to keep going and move on. He pointed out they are still leading the championship, and of course he would like to be leading by more points, but it is what it is. He also feels that it's great to have two cars up front fighting for the championship and also scoring points. Baku was a good example of that and how it should be done. It's great that Checo has been able to increase the gap to Mercedes in the Constructors' Championship and that he is now third in the Drivers' Championship. He is also sure Mercedes will be strong again on normal circuits, so they have to keep pushing and improving until the end because it's never enough. Retired F1 driver Gerhard Berger has suggested that Max no longer has blunt weapons, he has a super fast car. He also has an engine that is not that far removed from the Mercedes engine, which is why there are no excuses for Verstappen now. He also feels that Mercedes Lewis Hamilton will make more mistakes under pressure than in the past. For Alpha Tauri's Pierre Gasly, the podium in Baku comes at exactly the right time, because now they have his home race at Paul Ricard. Alpine's executive director Marcin Budkowski feels they still have work to do to understand their race pace deficit, and it is something they are actively investigating. And he also hopes their findings so far will help them to get a good result in France at a full-time circuit that is more typical of what they normally see in Formula 1. 
Will Mercedes be back on the pace again in France? Head over to my community page to vote in the poll and let me know what you think in the comments. And if you liked this video, feel free to subscribe and check out my others for all the latest in the world of Formula One.